This theme is our most ambitious theme yet, where we've had students solve a problem in a simulator and then transfer transfer that knowledge into a real environment with remote hardware. Normally having hardware with you is difficult, but since it was remote, it makes it even more of a challenge. Like now you're just plucking the stomachs, right? And putting them in the basket. If you also need to count the number of tomatoes plucked, how will you do that? Whenever we are dropping the tomato, we are printing the message that like this tomato has been picked up from this uh, like uh, so and so plant and it has been dropped in the bucket. So like we can just incre increment the counter like one, one and one plus one and that will like give the count of the tomatoes picked. Okay, and if uh, it sees a tomato but it's not quickly, maybe it's in a different height. Yes, sir. Altogether. In that case, what will happen? Sir, different height in what sense? So if the dip is different, like I mean, it's not in within the reach of the arm. Yeah. So uh, what will happen in that? Case? So in that case, like uh, we are using the depth to like uh, uh, get in like uh, the distance, like the permissible distance. So it will move forward. So it will not pick the tomato. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fine. It yeah it will like detect the tomato definitely, but the TF will only be broadcasted if the depth is within a certain range. Okay, and uh, how have you fixed this range? So, like, uh, that's like uh, the distance that is moving from the bot, and like uh, the length of the arm, like the length of the arm that it can uh, maximum, like the maximum depth that it can actually reach. The morning light is different from evening light, is different from afternoon light, and stuff like that. Yes, sir. So, uh, did you think of anything uh, other than a thresholding to kind of uh, tackle this kind of uh, yes, problem? Yes, yes. Since we have information of not only the color, uh, the image, we also have information of the depth. Uh, at first, we tried to make use of this information of having, uh, we have the 3D coordinates, not just the image. So at first, we tried to use a library, which would make use of this additional information that we have of the 3D um, positions of the tomatoes. But we found that uh, it was very computationally intensive. So we went for a more simple approach that is just simple thresholding on just the image. If you account, need to account for the, I mean, the light change, okay, like daylight, I mean, at different intervals. And if you're asked, I mean, you can do one change in your model, in your robot, but to account for the light change, what will you do? Because your threshold, everything depends upon the like in the light intensity. We were thinking of maybe placing a flashlight near the camera so that we get uniformity in all the tomatoes being detected yeah, so, so that, that we can... Yeah, that's, that was the answer I was expecting. Now in that case what will happen if you put a uh, flashlight or something? So now yeah. what will be the threshold now? So what are the... Then everything will be like white kind of, right? Yeah, white uh, with uh, white center and red uh, surrounding it, uh, the tomatoes yeah. color basically. So uh, what uh, now currently what we are doing is we are taking the range from around 125 for the H value, and also zero to ten. Uh, if we include that uh, flashlight, we can reduce the masks uh, being used, right. and uh, so that we can basically use only the bright red uh, part of our mask. What all properties can you use uh, for the shape? That property, they have to be invariant to the shape. So the question is, uh, I mean, you get the contour and yeah. you mentioned that shape would be another feature that you use to detect the yeah. tomato. So yeah. now, how will you represent shape? Maybe we can detect like sharp corners. If any sharp corners are present, uh, then we won't be considering that because uh, usually circles have like a uh, round. So maybe nice. in the counter okay. detection of sharp points. Yeah, fine. And how can you get this sharpness? Check for any sudden changes. There is a similar application and uh, we have done uh, quite similar to that. Putting a robotic arm on a mobile uh, vehicle, going into a special uh, sterile area Picking up all the, uh, it's a medical use, you know, for medical sampling. Picking up all the samples, taking inside the sterile area, dropping it into a particular place in the se several trays. As far as the farm is concerned, yes, new farms are coming similar to what you have designed. 
I'll just show you a picture of one farm which I visited very recently. Now this is exactly same as what you are doing. Okay. These are the ये खरबूजे हैं सब. Exactly same environment what you have shown. This is another picture. So I think what we are doing is preparing the manpower for these yes. kind of applications because these this kind of skill is very short on the ground. Right. So that's the whole the purpose of this entire. project in the sense that if you have a very growing economy right you need to uh, import substitute you need to innovate and build products uh, locally and that can only it can only happen when you develop these kind of skills in the students that they can actually see a problem and solve it in the real as opposed to kind of just doing uh, theory and all that it's been my ambition for the last at, at least 5 6 years to come with a speech interface to these kind of robots because i was thinking that what if you had these kind of robots under the control of local agriculturists you know, manpower should be looking after the greenhouse and they should be controlling the robot we anticipate having a speech based interface for doing most of the things you know that this robot could do the biggest problem that you know you face in a greenhouse where you are cultivating any kind of vegetable is actually not picking it but knowing it 3 days in advance that when will it become ripe so that you can plan the picking and the transportation that you can't do it by just seeing it you need to uh, be a little more better observer of the past so to say second is moisture and heat you know those are such a big problem in any greenhouse that it is not being handled by computing per se you know but it can be because it is uh, it, it, the data is available moisture and heat immediately uh, can ruin your crop and you know make it from 100 to 0 whenever you are given real life problems try to connect it to whatever you know i mean don't try to look for ad hoc solutions all the time or or solutions from the net it's good to so do these things on your own and evolve your own solutions otherwise you don't learn you learn somebody else's solutions try to connect to reality whatever you are trying to do it has to connect to what's out there in the world and that's a very hard connect i mean that that connecting that is is, is not easy and unless you make the effort and not expect the faculty to make that effort for you if you make that effort it's a lot more enjoyable i mean not it's not only this this project but even the courses that you take the rate of learning has increased you cannot underestimate the value of that because a rate of learning prolonged over a period of time what has happened is that your rate of learning is now distinct from that of other students you are more self contained in your ability to learn new things and to you know uh, become more atmanirbhar for want of a better word in that skill and this will set you apart in the sense that as time goes on the distance between you and the others will keep on increasing at a faster speed